Hey guys, it's May May, and it is a very exciting day around here. You guys have been wanting to learn more about Cards for Kids, and there's nobody better than Ike Wonkwo to tell you about it. And Ike is here with me today. There he is, and I have got a list of questions for him. He's going to fill you in on everything from what Cards for Kids is, to how it got started, to how you can help. We have a lot of ways you can help. So I'm super excited and I don't wanna waste any time in this intro. I want you to meet EK. So ladies and gentlemen, here's EK. Hello, hello, how are we doing team? We're so excited for you to be here. I can't tell you how many people have been like, I wanna know more, I wanna know more. And it's really hard to, to just explain it in a nutshell. You know, it's really hard to go, cause, cause Cards for Kids is so multifaceted right? So I have a series of questions and we're going to just start with number one. The first one is, EK, tell us about you, your background, where you're from, et cetera. Okay. So a little bit of background about myself is I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and that is, you know, we can say kind of a touch on between the two, both myself and how we could say cards for kids, you know, some of my original passion is grew up in Ann Arbor. Um, that's where I went. What I always tell people is zero through 16th grade. So kindergarten through college, all in Ann Arbor. But for other people out there, don't worry. We do have a place in Columbus, you know, so I'm nothing against Ohio State people. And it was growing up in Ann Arbor and it was around, I think the end of middle school, my parents were telling me that I need to start doing some volunteering and starting to give back to the community, et cetera. And that's when I first started um, volunteering at the Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor. So ever since then, I've been passionate about giving back and volunteering and doing every, other things like that. So I'm the kind of person who loves volunteering and loves Ann Arbor University of Michigan and have been, after high school, moved out here to Chicago. That's why uh, Cards for Kids is based out here in Chicago. And we've been working to, you know, send the cards from here. I love that your parents encourage you to work volunteer as a teenager. Like, I, I love that. Oh, they, they definitely did. It was um, heavily encouraged for us all to do some volunteering. I think it was partially my parents wanting us to make sure we were giving back and volunteering every summer, but then also, you know, additionally beneficial that that was time where we weren't you know, sitting around with the babysitter at a time we weren't sitting around at home. And I think it was for me, so my mom had always worked with kids growing up. It was, you know, there was a program, an organization that we were part of growing up called African Christian Fellowship. And, you know, my dad was leading the adults and my mom was always running, working with the kids. And from that organization, it was, you know, after I grew up or grew out of my you know, it was too old to be in my mom's class. It was either go into the boring class or be a good boy and help my mom teach. And I was like, oh, no, I'm a mama's boy. Why not stick with my mom and be considered a good boy and help I little kids? You know, I was like, you know, it's two pats on the back. So it was from there, it was kind of like, okay, it's great. You know, you get extra points for helping your mom and being around kids. <laughs> and that's something where, you know, just kind of from there kind of sparked my interest in working with kids. And, you know, later on, as I grew up a little bit more, I started to volunteering at the hospital and, you know, down the line, started an organization and rolling from there. That transition's perfect because so many people watching today may not be familiar with Cards for Kids. I've talked about it on my channel before, but we get new viewers every day. And I noticed in some comments recently, they were like, tell me about Cards for Kids. So this is the perfect chance for you to do it. So tell us what Cards for Kids is and what Cards for Kids does. Okay, so it's with Cards for Kids, it's an organization that is rapidly growing. And the main thing, well, one thing is we can say is the name is a little bit, you know, outdated because we're doing much more than simply delivering cards for kids, you know, expanding past that. But originally kind of what it is, is all about getting handmade cards. Like our main thing is getting handmade cards to encourage people who are going through difficult situations. And from the beginning, um, 
we were sending cards just to pediatric hospitals, trying to encourage some of the kids who were, you know, in difficult situations. And a lot of this is, you know, through some of my personal experience, understanding what these kids are going through and some of their trying times, making sure that the cards aren't saying things like get well soon, feel better, anything referring to their current condition, but have more of a lasting positive message, you know? And that's something that I've written in some of the recent blog posts too. And what we say is not um, commands such as you're strong or stay strong, but more of proclamations such as, you know, you're strong. So these, a lot of stuff is going on in these kids' lives and trying to make sure that people were lifting them up. But then it was, you know, over time, we started getting more cards in and realized like, okay, you know, thinking of my experience was like, let's reach out to some Ronald McDonald houses, understanding that what those kids were going through was not just tough on those kids, but also tough on the families as well. And then, you know, as we grew a little bit more, it was kind of reaching out to foster homes and some other um, places for abused children, trying to reach those kids as well. Um, understanding that those kids need encouragement. Those kids need to feel like someone is thinking of them as well. You know, and then, you know, I'm gonna write a blog post about this, but kind of amazing how we can say, uh, quoting my, someone we, I grew up with, uh, or grew up watching Mr. Rogers. You can say like cards for kids all expanded, all based on a beautiful day in my neighborhood, you know, just running around in my neighborhood. There's now like, you know, Ronald McDonald House Charities, uh, Senior Home, and all different kinds of places are all right around here. But it was one day going on a run in my neighborhood past this senior place. And I just was focused on the fact that it said little brothers. And I was thinking like, oh, this is a place that's helping little kids. I should check in and see if they want cards. So one day after the run, showered up, got clean, went back there. And I didn't, not really thinking, didn't see that it said friends of the elderly and not really thinking, didn't Google it or visit the website but it was an organization that actually helped seniors. And there was another place that I passed by that was like Salvation Army. And I thought about it, Salvation Army, that was a place where as little kids, we went to that day camp all the time. And so I was thinking, oh, Salvation Army, this helps kids who are you know, lower income, needs assistance. So I went there to see if they wanted cards, but it was actually a senior home. And so with those two places that I had just passed in my neighborhood, checking to see if they wanted cards. Those are actually two places for seniors. And so that's how the whole, it was originally called Cards From Kids, where we originally started expanding to seniors and you know sending cards there. But now um, we've expanded and are sending cards to seniors all across the US, which was something that was really big during COVID-19 because a lot of those seniors were strictly stuck in their homes. Right. And you, you've also done for vet. You send for veterans. Yeah, that was uh, a a special situation. How that happened. Uh, I, 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 what I say, everything happens for a reason, and that was divine. I, I think it was. Um, so I got was working at this job. Everything about that opportunity or that position was, how I'll say, uh, less than enchanting. Mm -hmm. how that job worked out um you know it wasn't very long that I worked there before and after everything was um out less than enchanting but it was work there started there talked to someone about cards for kids they approached me about cards for kids and it was um she was just talking to me and she was like oh it's great she was an army veteran she's like oh I have some contacts at a couple of VA hospitals and I want to connect you to them and I was like, I didn't ask you or talk to you about that at all. And she gave me um, folks in Columbus, Ohio State people. She gave me a contact in Columbus and Minneapolis. And I think it was like Cincinnati. She's like, yeah, you should talk to these people because they could potentially want some cards. Yeah. And so it was intervention is what that was. 
Exactly. Exactly. And uh, and that was the that's only reason I can think of how that position worked out and why it worked out like that. You know, because it was I think it was the place in Columbus. They were like, how did you know that we were thinking of doing this? How did you know that we wanted cards and we were going to? And I was like, I, I didn't. She gave me your information. I didn't. I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to your conversations. Right. Or, she <laughs> gave it to me. I have it documented. Like, and they're like, okay. How did, and I'm like, hey, this is, you know, nonprofit. I'm not the government. I can't listen in on anything. So, so after I proved it to them that I wasn't listening, they approved and they started receiving cards. Then they took it. You touched on that Cards for Kids has kind of outgrown its name. We understand that. We love the name. We love the logo. It's so cute. But Cards for Kids is delivering cards to children, to the families of children, to veterans, to seniors, to uh victims of domestic abuse, to foster families. You have so many different places cards are going nowadays. But I think what I'd really, really like to get into, I wanted to make sure I knew what Cards for Kids is. I would really like to know where it began. How, how, I know that there had to be a moment in your life when you went, this is something I want to do, or something had to speak to you. So tell us how Cards for Kids just got started from, from your idea to where it is now. Okay. So what I always tell people to be, precise and people ask how did cards for kids start how did you think of it is you know you want to know technically is i accidentally started it on purpose you know that's the the detailed explanation and how it works is you know i think that's what we were talking about. that could be some of the divine intervention looking into it is the whole the whole thing how it worked was you know, had gotten a message from, you know, went back to church at my old place, like I'm saying, out here in Chicago, went back to my old church in Michigan. And the pastor had, you know, talked about, you know, it's called for the ministry, something part-time. And it's like, wow, that's surprising. Like, I had no idea. I'd never heard of that. And then came back and talked to um, some of the children's pastors, because, you know, I'd always um, been interested in working with children. So I talked to the children's pastors and they, um, you know, said, yes, you can run one of the children's teams for children's church. And so I was running that team. And then also, um, you know, I talked a little bit earlier during this about how my parents were running um, this organization or my dad was the president, my mom was running the children's program. So I was kind of following their lead and I was a uh, vice president of what was called, the organization called African Christian Fellowship. I was the vice president of African Christian Fellowship Young Adult. We were having a conference in um, Chicago. And so I was in charge of planning that conference. And what we were doing was kind of trying to make it a three-part conference, like where people could be connected to Christ, the community, and the city. You know, getting to do some community service, do some sightseeing, and then also do some devotion parts throughout it. So trying to figure out ways to do all of that. Then at the same time was like volunteering at the hospital. And, you know, this time I was looking into jobs and also looking into doing my MBA, starting to do that as well. So there was a lot on my plate and was thinking about like, wow, this is a lot going on. I was trying to think of different community service projects that I could do but there was not really anything that was what I could take for these young adults that they could do as a one-time thing. And I remember I got like really stressed out and I was like, gosh, like I give up, like I can't do it. And I was like, I just wish I could take these adults to the hospital or talk to the hospital. They're like, no, they can't do it. We can't bring multiple people in. And I was like, man, I give up. And I was like, I wish I could just combine everything together. There's just so much going on. And then I was like, what if I combine everything together? Okay. Yeah. So then I had the young adults work with the kids from my church to make cards for the kids at the hospital. And it was, you know, and I went and delivered them during my next volunteer shift. You know, I had to get approval from everyone, of course, but did that. Everyone loved it. And Tried to do it a couple more times from my church, but um, you know, after a while, they were like real slow to do it. And 
sorry, getting a little touchy here, but one of the ways I heard is, you know, God speaks through closed doors. So the church, they were like, oh, we'll, we'll get to it later. Yeah. We'll get to it. We'll do it later some other time. And it was just kind of like, mm, I know what that means. <laughs> later, later, later. I know what that means. So then I took it to my job where I was working at and, um, different like it blew up and HR was like yeah you know just run it and buy all the stuff and expense it and I was like all right um if you're giving me like unlimited budgets and telling me to expense all the stuff I'm going to start tracking this to make sure like it doesn't come back and you know something hot like and so that's the same Excel sheet that we use nowadays where able to see like, oh, you know, May May crew that made this many cards. Like that's all the Excel sheet that I created back when I was at work trying to make sure that I would know where all the cards came from, or how much money was spent and how many cards were made was all from there. But then it was at work, it was like they moved us down to our sister company's floor and they got them to join in and I found out like our other sister company had like snuck down to participate like two of our employees because like one of them was like on my team and then another one was like the sister of one of my former bosses at another company and like you guys don't have to sneak down we can like expand it up there so it was like the next quarter we had like all three floors were joining in and then the VP um, of Cards for Kids Now David Harrison he was like, oh, I want to do it at my company. And all these other people were joining in, like saying they wanted to do it. And then some people were like, you should make it a nonprofit. You should make it a 501c3. And I was like, I, uh, what? I, I don't know. And so then it was talk to my neighbor, uh, my sister's best friend from like middle school, and this girl who I had a crush on and like, high school middle school high school these three people who are all lawyers they did all that paperwork for me and then now cards for kids is a 501c3 certified nonprofit. so that's what i say accidentally on purpose i meant to have people make cards for kids but didn't mean for it to and i originally did that wasn't thinking that it was going to turn into a 501c3 certified nonprofit impacting kids and seniors around the world. That's amazing. What's amazing is you had an idea and you went with it and it drove you after that. And that's, a, that's fine. You stayed on the right <laughs> and look where you're at. Like we had a viewer ask, um, I think it'd be interesting for you to answer this here. Like how, what's your dream? How big do you want to be? That was, let me say who asked that question. I want to give them credit. It was, um, let me make sure. Um, Elizabeth said, how big do you dream for cards to kids for Cards for Kids to be? It's, I think my dream, one of the things I say the first step that I say is, you know, my dream is, and I don't know if you can see here, I know when I'm looking at myself with this, I, I don't know if it's just lighting or whatever, but I can see my head being lopsided with this. And it's, that's something I'll never forget, will always remember, and it's with my brain surgery. Right. And that, you know, providing that background is, you know, I had brain surgery in my sophomore year of college. And I always will think about that, like how that was, what I always say is unfair, looking at my perspective and how that was unfair for me thinking about how, looking at some of these kids. So for me, it was unfair because I already had my scholarship you know, I was already in, admitted into the business school. So I was like, got a scholarship into Michigan, got admitted into the business school, and then everything happened. So I was already, I was already set, you know, I was already like admitted and everywhere where I needed to be. So it didn't matter if my grades dropped a little bit, didn't matter whatever happened. I was already where I needed to be and I already, already was a little bit of a teacher's pet to some of the administration. You know, so I was able to walk around campus and talk to, you know, the head of the BBA program about the show Pimp My Ride because I had already uh, made some connections in there. So 
But thinking about that compared to some of the kids who I volunteer with who are having that same brain surgery at the age of like eight, age of you know 12 or whatever, that I, that's what I think is unfair that I had mine I'm already set. These kids are having it at this kind of uh, younger age. When I was having mine in college, couldn't remember the four P's of marketing. And these little kids who are having it, you know, still maybe getting scholarships or getting their GPAs, that's judging based on, you know, grades. So I think it would be cards for kids growing, being able to launch a scholarship for kids that doesn't look into their GPA. It's launching something where it is looking into kids, you know, kids for what I what I classify individuals like myself are individuals with special abilities. So all of us kids are individuals where not special needs, we're not disabilities, but instead we have the special ability to overcome our situations and still smile. So I'm including myself because I have epilepsy. So I'm including myself as one of those as well. And so launching a scholarship as for those kind of people who are overcoming their special abilities and, you know, giving them a scholarship. So that's one of the things that I looking into and then also making it more of a global thing as well. Um, there are some discussions right now with a company who, you know, does a lot of global shipping and will be able to help make, you know, make our shipping to Australia and South America, like all that more cost efficient, or they would do that all for, for us for free. But being able to make it so we could have different kinds of potential like hubs in those other, other locations would make it much more efficient. So I think that is something where it would be a dream to be, you know, different kinds of people in, you know, the Cards for Kids team in Australia, in, you know, I'm biased, Nigeria, in, you know, Brazil, like different kinds of places like that. So making sure that we're reaching as many like just to help with the shipping and making sure that we have that kind of coverage globally. So when you talked about, I think that is a beautiful plan to do the scholarship for children who, and like you said, it was kind of, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a, a speed bump for you. You had to get, you were already set and then you hit this speed bump and you had to kind of back up and re and regain speed where you were going. Right. But you're talking about these children who are younger than you that hadn't even gotten to that. It wasn't a speed bump for them. It is literally, it's life changing for them. And you want them to be able to access college funds without having to have these GPAs that are out the roof. And I, I think that's very wonderful. And you know what? You're going to do it. I just know you are. I just have a feeling it's going to happen probably more than one scholarship. You'll probably be able to, I, I'm excited about that. And of course, you know, I want to help you make that happen. Like I love your dream and I want to be a part of it. And I hope my viewers are jumping on too. And then the second part, when we talked about how big you were going to get, you know, most people, many people may not, you're already global. I mean, many people may not realize that. You want to talk a little bit about how far out you're already reaching? Yeah. So it's, Already, um, what I think I was talking about a little bit earlier is based on uh, my neighbor down the street. Um, it's, I think, you know, within a mile or a mile and a half is the Ronald McDonald House Charities, their headquarters. And that's one of the main ways that we are global, you know, partnering with a lot of these um, Ronald McDonald House Charities around the globe. So have partnerships and, you know, sending cards in like Portuguese to the partners in Portugal or Brazil and, you know, Romanian to our Ronald McDonald House in Romania, and, you know, you know, some in like Australia, Spain, like all, so sending cards and packages all across the globe. We have at least one partnership in each continent. We are sending some to our partnership in South Africa is often a little bit more difficult because sometimes the packages get returned. And that was something that was talking about with our um, the shipping partner 
who would definitely make that something would be much easier immediately being able to securely get the packages to uh, you know South Africa because it's with that um, we'll send the package there. something that happens a lot with the not a lot but sometimes with the global locations is we'll get it returned and it will say something about like you know this place didn't pay the customs fee you know and it'll, so so it's like sometimes they we pay the customs and then they're supposed to pay some kind of customs fee as well right but it's like that happens sometimes but not all the time which is intriguing so yeah we experience we experience that too and it, it's it's a little difficult to navigate because like you said sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't i have to go back to this we you and i didn't even talk about discussing this but i think it's important you're talking about all the things that Cards for Kids does and all the work that gets done. I think it's important you tell how many physical people actually make this happen. In terms of employee or volunteers or? Volunteer, I, I want people to understand, like you and I were talking earlier that you feel like sometimes your social media people are messaging you and, and questioning things and you don't really have the time to respond. I want people to hear why, like tell them how many volunteers, I mean, just tell them who's doing the work, who's doing the legwork. Yeah. So it's uh, a lot. I, I think it's that. I think I'm, I'm hoping that's the misconception. I'm hoping that is the reason why we're getting some, um, less than well, that's my thing so I always say my thing is I'm breathing so I can't complain so right. I try not to complain that's my saying so what I say is less than enchanting that's what I say so I'm hoping that's the reason we're getting some less than enchanting uh, comments on some of the posts is some people don't really understand that there's not like some kind of full staff and you know a lot of paid employees doing this you know so it's um well i'm a volunteer here you know the only way that i get any kind of money from cards for kids is if i go speak at an event and they you know pay and donate to cards for kids then i get a portion of that you know the vp of cards for kids who made this background and was doing a whole bunch of stuff like you know he only pay he only gets some money if i go speak at an event and get support so it's everyone who's involved with this is strictly a volunteer, you know? So there was a couple, I think there's, we're now up to four volunteers who volunteered over a hundred hours, you know, over the, um, I think like over four years, you know? So it's not, and that doesn't include myself or the VP, our hours, like our, hours doing like administrative stuff. It's, those are just four people who've done over a hundred hours of counting cards over like four or five years. So it's- Let's transition, um, let's transition that because this is important. So it's it's you and Dave. Yes. Founder, co-founder or vice president, then four volunteers. Okay. And let's talk about this because this is our next question. When the first year you sent out cards, how many cards did you send out the first year? Yeah. So that first year when it was well, the first year when it was just the kids making it for my church, I don't know exactly how many that was, but it was when it moved, when I started keeping the Excel right. for work, that was, I think, 115. 115 cards. So four yeah. volunteers can handle that. Like, that's no problem. <laughs> now, let's talk about 2020. Um, so I happen to be blessed to be on the board of Cards for Kids. So I got to be in a a meeting recently where I got to see numbers. And there's one thing about EK, if you ask him how many cards did you send, he keeps records and I love that. He knows the growth, you know where it's going. He's very good at forecasting, which is awesome. But tell them how many cards you sent in 2020. Are you opening all your files so you can get exact numbers? I know you. I'm, I'm looking at it right now, yep. <laughs> so in 2020, and I happen to know that 2020 had exponential growth in and of itself. Yeah. So, so yes. Tell them the co the comparison between 150 to last year. Yeah. So this 2020 so far, we're still tracking and counting some of the cards. You know, I had some volunteers here yesterday, and 
so far in 2020, I uh, received 100,000, 100,915 cards. Um, that's how much has been received. And it was something that was posted on our um, page. And that was, you know, talking about because in Q4 alone, we received more cards. In Q4 2020, we received more cards than we did of all of 2019, you know, just with that rapid growth right there. So let's put so, that in perspective. That means the entire year of 2019, the last quarter of 2020, there was more cards sent in that last quarter than the whole year of 2019. But the same volunteers, the same uh, staff, that staff's not the right term, but the same volunteers. And so I, I'm fascinated by how much work goes into. Now, a lot of that obviously in 2020 has been, you know, the pandemic has changed the way things, you know, vol you can't just have everybody volunteering and it has to be done a very specific way. And that, and cards have to be delivered a specific, everything's kind of changed. We know mm -hmm. that, but what incredible growth, right? Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I think this is very, very important. Many people think that, EK mentioned earlier that they want handmade cards. There's a reason for that. There, a handmade card speaks to someone in a different way than a purchased card. And I know that may not, that may not seem accurate, but I promise you because I'm a card maker, it just is. <laughs> when you give somebody a card you made and they're like, you made this for me, it just, it speaks volumes. So um, they ask for handmade cards, start to finish handmade cards. Mm -hmm. Also unique cards. Um, I kind of was a problem with this because I didn't think about this and EK taught me this, but I was like, make as many as you can, make as many as you can. And sometimes that's not even as good as make as quality as you can. So make a card that's unique and individual and speaks to who you're, who you're wanting to send it to. That's even more important in some places. So 150 cards versus 50 really well-written cards. Sometimes it's just better to do that. But cards are not the only thing that um, that Cards for Kids needs. And I was going to ask EK if he could talk about all of the things that help the organization move forward and continue to grow. So will you let us know what else you need? Yeah. So it's, I think with this, kind of, yeah, touching on first, like confirming what you're saying is, yeah, quality is what we're needing. And the main thing, I think the main thing that people forget to do with their cards, like one of the common things that happen is people don't write their name and location on it. Because we're, we're sending cards, you know, as you can imagine, like a little child in Alaska receiving cards, you know, from Alabama. Or, you know, we get a lot of stories about parents um, opening, opening their cards and hearing about how they went and pointed on the map and showed their child on the map where all their cards were coming from, you know, and that it makes it so much more valuable. Like it can be like a geography lesson and like an exciting thing to look through the cards and see it. So they're so much more valuable. And I was like, this was handmade from your friend all the way over here. And this is where we are in the map, you know, it's long distance. So that's kind of why we're trying to encourage people to do it. And the thing is we are, um, our big specialty is trying to reach small to mid-size hospitals and homes, places that get overlooked. So it's a lot of times people, um, if they're trying to push out or make more quantity, just understand like that may be the only thing that ho hospital or home gets. And so that's kind of why it's a little bit better. We're trying to encourage people, you know, take a little bit more time on that. Don't you know, mass produce because that may be the only thing that child or that senior, that vet, that may be the only thing they get, you know? And so it's the kind of thing where it's, that is the encouragement they may need as they're going through that time. So yeah, that's a little bit more of a confirmation there. Then like, yeah, as we're growing, we're doing something. And yeah, I put this out there a little bit, like with Cards for Kids, kind of wondering like, okay, you know, is this, is this the reason why, you know, everything is happening? Everything happened to me. I was talking to my dad a little bit about this. Uh, when we were chatting this past week, like, okay, you know, maybe this is making sense. 
maybe now I understand why I don't know if you can see why I got this big scar here through cards for kids, it would make sense because a lot of the stuff that we're doing is biased based on my experience <clears throat> as a patient, you know? So all of the cards need to be, you know, if we're partnering with the location, it's like, uh, I remember what it was like getting my EEG and what it was like during that branch. It's like, if you want to partner with us, you got to promise to deliver that card room to room because <laughs> I know what it's like being stuck in my room. That sucks. No. Nope cards got to be delivered room to room or else we can't partner with you. And then it's like, you know, as we're growing and getting more donations, it was like thinking about like, yeah, I remember, I remember what it was like when they came into my room and they told me I may never be able to speak again and I may not remember anything based on the surgery. And yeah, that, you know, they told me that as like a 20 year old. Can't imagine if I was a 10 year old. Let's see if we can purchase these entertainment systems that can be rolled into the rooms for these 10 year olds who can't leave because they're getting these kind of medical procedures. So that's why it's like trying to raise funds and purchase these entertainment systems. And then how we're doing is trying to, at the same time, you know, since we're getting donations and doing all that, making sure we do it so we're rewarding our partners who are donating and making cards. So it's like, all right, hospitals and homes, nonprofits, whoever, like, we'll reward you. You take some pictures of your staff, your kids, whoever, holding those cards that you receive, we'll get you one of these entertainment systems that can be rolled into the rooms of these kids who are getting EEGs or what other medical condition. But in but my I'll bias, the thing about is, that too, because that's, you know, that's what got me. You and I were talking and I was like, my kids are gamers. That's what they do. So it's like, that speaks to me because sometimes I think that er, that we think everybody can afford technology. Like everybody can afford iPads. Everybody can afford it. And they're like, when children are in the hospital, they're all, oh, their parents probably bring their iPad. I mean, sometimes we think like that, right? But not all, you know, medical issues don't, don't, they don't really care about your financial status. So when you're in the hospital, some of these children may have never touched an iPad, may not know anything about technology. And this entertainment system not only plays video games, it plays movies. Um, One of the things that got me was a picture of a nurse watching a movie with a child. And I thought that was so cool. And then there was pictures of like nurses playing video games with them. And it's so cool to think that all these, or this is all that Cards for Kids requires. This organization just has to deliver the cards. This is the way EK makes sure these cards get into the hands of the children, okay? They have to deliver the cards, snap some photos, send them to EK, and then he does everything he can to raise the funds to get them their entertainment system. Now, those entertainment systems cost between 3500 and 4000 to deliver. That's, mm-hmm. that's purchased and delivered, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that's how much one costs. So every dollar you donate, and because we talk about needing cards all the time, you don't hear so much about how much money goes into the organization. And we haven't even talked postage. We haven't even got <laughs> that because postage is on cards for kids. Like that's not, um, people, some people, I love this. Some of you guys are sending your cards with a check and that's awesome. Like sending uh, money for postage or money toward a gaming system. And I want to encourage you to do something. I didn't tell EK I was doing this, but I want to tell you this. You can contact Cards for Kids and tell them you want to raise money for a gaming system. And he will set up a web page for you, right? You're, mm-hmm. Like say your business says, we want, to, we want to raise money for an entertainment system. He will set up a little web page for you that you can share. All your employees can share. All your coworkers can share. And they can donate or have their friends donate. And, all of, and then that can be like, say you work for, I don't know, ABC Graphics. We'll just say that's the name of your company. Then ABC Graphics is doing this fundraiser and they're raising the money to raise $4,000 for an entertainment system. And it's just through a website. All you do is share the link and then all that goes to those entertainment systems. And then also, I think this is super important and I know EK is, he's very modest and he won't always talk about this, but I want to tell you this. (laughs) On the webpage, there is a donate button on cardsforkids.org. There's a donate button. When you press that donate button, you can donate monthly. You can donate one time. You can donate any dollar amount that you want. Monthly donations are incredible. They help so much because $10, $15, $20 goes for that postage. And if you're, if you're an online shopper and you know what shipping is looking like nowadays, and I think we've had our third increase this year, 
Yeah. We just hit our third increase. Every penny you can donate counts. And so it's important that if you can make cards, make cards. If cards aren't your thing, if you can help fundraise, help fundraise. Um, there's so, and not only that, like you might think I'm not any of those things. I can't do any of those things. Then just spread the word. I can't tell you how important it is to go. I want y'all to know about this organization. I just learned about it and here's how they need help because you never know who might see your Facebook post or see your Instagram story where you're talking about cards for kids. You never know who might go. I was looking for a place to donate or I was looking for a place to send cards to and your share could do that. But we have something really exciting coming up. We have to talk about EK and that is Saturday and Sunday. You want to talk about that? You want me to explain it? How you want to do it? <laughs> I think we can do a teamwork, but I just want to say one thing yeah, real quick about with what you were saying is adding on to if we do those individual pages for people who are raising funds for those entertainment system, just the one thing is that um, we'll raise those funds for you. And then, you know, once you reach the goal, we will donate that system to whatever state you select. And your logo will be placed on that system. And we'll invite you, you know, post-COVID when able to travel to hospitals again. But invite you to the cord cutting event. And you'll be able to cut the cord, meet the staff and all that. So it'll be, you'll actually be able to see where your money is going to and how the impact that you're having. Meeting I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to do that. I know yeah. that um, our last fundraiser raised enough to get, multiple in game systems or the Facebook fundraiser that people participate in. But we'll, when it's time where we can go again, we're going to do it again. We're going to get another system and we're going to get to go. Like our staff wants to go. We want to go anywhere at this point. Right. But we're going to go. We're excited. So you, you about got the page yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do have the page. I will link my page. If you don't want to start a page and you just want to give through my link, I'll put that in the description of this video. Um, I'm also going to add it to the description of all my videos. So if you're ever like, hmm, I want to give and I don't know where to do it, you can just look in the description. I'll put it in all my YouTube videos. So we'll have it. Um, we also, I haven't even mentioned this to EK, but we're launching a new blog this quarter. It should be out in March. And we have a spot for Cards for Kids where you'll link directly to the Cards for Kids website from there. And that way, if you want to donate, you can do it from our blog. We have, we're trying to integrate a lot. Uh, with cards for kids so talk about this weekend because i cannot believe what opportunity we okay. have to raise some money yeah so it's to give a little bit of background um starting out was with kendra scott and we'll you know give you guys like we always say with the blog post we write 100 percent open and honest you know so this i didn't tell may may didn't provide her this information but you know everything full circle with this is you know Thankfully, we can say, thankfully, I have epilepsy, and that's how this is all happening. So because I have epilepsy, my sister is a pediatric neurologist with a specialty in epilepsy. You know, so it's like because of my condition, she decided what kind of doctor she wanted to be. And she's part of, I think, the Epilepsy, epilepsy Awareness Association or some kind of organization like that. And they had some kind of fundraiser through... Um, Kendra Scott, and she's told me about it, like, hey, this is what I heard about through this Epilepsy Awareness Association. They had this kind of fundraiser, you know, we're doing some kind of thing through there, and we, you know, purchase jewelry through there, and you can raise 20%. That's what this Epilepsy Association did, and I was like, oh, Epilepsy Association, you know, that's cool, I'll look into it. And she kept talking to me about it, and kept pushing me, like, I want to buy some jewelry and help you guys, and I was like, okay, I'm trying. I passed it on to the VP. He's looking into it, like epilepsy power. We're looking into it. And then um, when we finally heard back about it, talked to uh, talk to the contact for Kendra Scott here in Chicago, because they get someone who's um, close to you to be your main point of contact. We were discussing about, you know, the 20%. So it's, if people, the main thing is if people purchase jewelry using your code on the set day then Kendra Scott will donate 20 percent of those funds raised or 20 percent of the sale to um, your organization that's the main way that they do it and you know we were discussing a little bit about our organization and what we do and our passion points and you know 
our impact on Chicago and our impact on the globe. And she was saying like, you know, that's an amazing thing of what you guys are doing. I want to do more. And I was like, hey, we'd love for you to do more. We're reaching more. And so what it is, is the special thing, we have a post coming up where it's, where if you buy this jewelry, it's everyone wins. Because it's, they set up something based on our discussions with Kendra Scott, it's going to be, if you buy a piece of jewelry, then it's going to be, um, you know, you're getting the jewelry, we're getting 20% of the sales and something special they set up is they're going to donate a piece of jewelry to one of these um, domestic violence places that we're partnering with. You know, so I've had a couple calls, I shouldn't say a couple, had quite a few calls and emails this week, making sure, talking to all the different places that we've been partnering with, making sure that, you know, they could take on this jewelry and how much they could take and, you know, just getting an idea on that. And they were all very excited that they would be able to reward the women that they're working with. And, the, you know, talking about how excited they would be for these women to get jewelry. I was talking to um, one of our partners in Mississippi, and they were saying, like, this would be an excellent way for them to reward their women on Mother's Day or reward their women on, you know, for getting their GEDs and encouraging their women to keep working hard. And, you know, she was getting a little bit emotional about how strong it was. And she gave me some word that they, she said they say in the South and this was really strong for them. And so, you know, it's a way for us to be able to give back because with Cards for Kids, we've been, I was just thinking about it. We do so much work and give back so much with these shelters to the kids who are there, who've been seeing the abuse, but haven't necessarily been giving back as much to the women who've been abused in these um, situations as well. So now with, by purchasing this jewelry, we'll be able to reach both, you know, giving cards to the children there, as well as giving a piece of jewelry to the women there, rewarding them for their strength as they've been overcoming these situations. So let me tell you the details, because this is very important. The purchases that are made on February 6th and 7th, this video is, is planned to go up on February 5th, so a day before the sale. So tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, February 5th, uh, 6th and 7th, and I'll have all this information going across the screen. Any purchase you make online at KendraScott.com, 20% of that purchase, as long as you put our code in, which the code is on the screen and also in the description, as long as you put our code in, 20% of that goes to Cards for Kids as a fundraiser you get a piece of jewelry or you might be gifting it to someone else and a piece of jewelry for everyone you purchase is being sent to one of these women's shelters as an encouragement for abused and um, you know women who are going through all kinds of situations we can't even imagine and the fact that Kendra Scott was willing to do this is so cool but we stepped it up another notch which I think is super fun okay so um, Shannon and I started looking and can you see my necklace can you see it okay it's so cute yeah. see the little arrow? It is, yes so Shannon and I picked out a piece that we felt like embodied card for, cards for kids. And here's why. It's like a, it's a heart in the shape of an arrow. And for us, it was like, we put our love into these cards and then we send them, like we shoot them with an arrow. We send them out to share our love. So we're calling this necklace, the official cards for kids necklace for the event. And so if you're one of us, if you're a card maker and you're someone who's supporting cards for kids, get your necklace, join the necklace club. That's what we're calling it, our necklace club. And um, I was telling my viewers about it this week and they're so excited to get the necklace. It comes in three colors, gold, silver, and rose gold. And it's very affordable. Um, and this one, actually this one and the one that Shannon has was sent to us from Kendra Scott. And I want to show you something. If you order these as a gift, look how they come packaged. Like they're absolutely gorgeous in these boxes. And I've seen other people do Kendra Scott jewelry openings and you get this little bag. Like if you're giving this as a gift, you won't be sad. If you're sending it across the miles to somebody, they'll love it. So I think it's amazing and I'm so grateful for what Kendra Scott is doing and I can't wait to buy more. I'm thinking of all the people that I want to give things to. And also, Shannon, didn't you tell me there were earrings to match this? I think there's earrings and possibly a bracelet. Like if you want to step it up, that's great. And there's so many cute things on their site. But what we could do this weekend, listen, I want to tell you, I had a viewer say to me, 
I'm going to do my Christmas shopping this way. I want you to hear this. I think this is awesome. She's going to be choosing companies to buy from that are pe- that her purchase gives back. And she said, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to start my Christmas shopping. I'm going to buy presents for people. So I know my purchase is giving back. This is your chance. If you've got a Christmas list, put it out there. Go buy your jewelry. If you purchase, this is to my viewers, guys, if you purchase the Cards for Kids official necklace, we want to know about it. You can post a picture of you wearing it and tag us. Like if you put on Instagram, tag us. Tag Cards for Kids too and let them see it. Yes. That's awesome. Um, you can put it on yes. our Discord group. You can put it on um, any of our Facebook groups or situations. We want to see it. We want to know that you have your necklace. And then the day we can all be together again, because y'all know we can't wait to do our crops again, we'll all be wearing our necklaces and I love it. And we'll know that we help support this organization and how much we all love Cards for Kids. By the way, if you didn't love Cards for Kids before today, you at least love EK, I know. (laughs) (laughs) When I met EK for the first time, I literally had chills hearing his story and what all he has done. And I was so excited. And again, I'm very blessed to be part of the organization. I I appreciate that um, EK saw enough of me to ask me to do that. And that means a lot to me. Um, there's no telling where we're gonna where we're gonna go together with this. I want to be on board and help you as much as I can. I know my viewers do, and I think today has really given an insight to what Cards for Kids is and how everyone can help. And there's a place for everybody to help. I mean, anybody can help, right? That's that's for sure. That's that's what that's what we say is like um, you know every card counts, but all kinds of contributions can help. You know. Um, so, sorry, I was just looking it up there. So far, Meme, according to our records, it's 7,414 um, cards and bookmarks that she's made from now your... Our, our Meme's have our made it have done. Yes. 7,414. Wow. Okay, so just so y'all know, if you're watching today, and if you're watching today on Meme Made It, we call you a Made It. My my team are the Made It's. That's what we call ourselves. And... um. <laughs> I actually found Cards for Kids through a bookmark drive he was doing, which is also where I kind of went off. I should have done more research, but anyway, um, through a bookmark drive he was doing, and he needed 3,000 bookmarks, and I thought, oh, we can do 3,000 bookmarks. My people got this, right? My girls can do this. My guys can do this. My my crafters can do this, and they went to town doing it, Um, Mm -hmm. but if you submit something to Cards for Kids and you want it to go to our number, because EK keeps up with it, just make sure you put on there. You can put I'm a made it because he knows the made it's or may may's made it's or what you can put that on there. You can put hashtag may may made it, whatever, and just let them know this group is is from us. Then it goes to our account. Um, I think it's awesome. Maybe we need to set a goal for 100,000 cards in 2021. You think I think so. Come on, made it's we can do that. There's lots of us. We can do that. So we'll see what we can do. I, we're going to have to wrap this up. EK has another meeting to go to, and he told me his time frame today. But I think so much information has been given, and I'm so excited to see what happens this weekend. And we have more stuff coming, y'all. I kind of teased in the Discord the other day that we have a fundraiser coming that's a challenge night. Come on. And everybody freaked out. It's going to be so much fun. I'm working on that. You'll hear more information as that um, gets rolling. And I can't wait. EK, we love you around here. We love you. <laughs> Feeling is mutual. Love being around. That's awesome. If they want to get in contact with you, I'm going to put all your information in the description as well. Your website, your Facebook, all of that. And um, he and listen, remember, guys, if you don't hear from him for a day or two, four <laughs> volunteers and EK. That's it. And he'll get yeah. to you as fast as possible. <laughs> we'll get, I don't know if you can see the bags under, yeah. but uh, you know, putting in some hours. But we <laughs> we are getting all the emails. And we'll be smart. I can attest that EK doesn't sleep. He and I have better <laughs> conversations at 3 a.m. than we do at regular times. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, EK. Yes. Thanks so much. There you go. Got that coffee yeah. going. Thanks so much for allowing me to do this interview. I'm honored that you let me do this on my channel. It means a lot. And um, we'll just see where we go from here, right? Sounds good. Yes. Thank you. It's looking forward to uh, seeing some of those necklaces. I want to see uh, sharing those out there. I'm excited too. Hey, thanks so much. And we will talk to you next time. All right. Sounds good. Thank you guys very much. Bye now.